Hey guys, I was browsing on eBay and I saw this retro PC. It's only 17 US dollars or 25 Australian dollars to pick up. And yeah, no one seems interested. It is still up for grabs. I even talked about it on Twitter, but no one wants it. So the case is from Cooler Master. It's a Cavalier case. And here we can see the main board. So it's from Asus. It's an AIM2 Plus board. And what's cool about it, this one is full ATX. It's got an AMD chipset, the 780G and the 700 Southbridge. This motherboard supports 125 watts as well as 140 watt processors, including the Athlon 2, the Phenom 2, and even the Phenom 2X6. And it has four DDR2 slots. Here we can see the processor. So this is an AMD Athlon 2 X4 620. So has four cores running at 2.6 gigahertz. Four gigabytes of RAM. We have two modules with two gigabytes each. DDR2 from Corsair. A really nice graphics card. This is the ATI Radeon HD 5770. Now it doesn't seem to include a power supply or storage, but uh, with old power supplies, it's a good idea to replace them anyway and storage a basic SSD doesn't cost too much. Now I have a lot of computer parts lying around and I thought, hey, why not recreate this computer and just show you what sort of retro gaming value can you get for 17 US dollars. Let's have a look at the core components. So the motherboard is from MSI. This one is Micro ATX, but it's got the same chipset the AMD 780G. The G stands for onboard graphics. We have four DDR2 slots, PCI Express with 16 lanes and with one lane, also two PCI slots, four SATA ports, and at the back, heap of ports, two USB 2, two PS2. We've got VGA and DVI, gigabit ethernet, and also audio. With the RAM, I was lucky. I have the exact same memory, the DDR2 modules from Corsair, four gigabytes in dual channel configuration. I also had an Athlon 2X4. My model is the 640. It's clocked higher, three gigahertz instead of 2.6. So what I did is just go into the bus and I lowered the multiplier so that we also have it running at 2.6 gigahertz. Now, I didn't have a Radeon 5770, but here we have the HD 6770 and the specifications are identical. This uh, was a rebrand. So AMD uh, purchased ATI and all the 5000 series cards were rebranded to 6000 series cards going from ATI to AMD. For storage, I've got a 500 gigabyte SSD. This one is from Crucial. MX500 and we have a 750 watt power supply from Asus. The graphics card is from 2011 so we're going with Windows 7 64 bit and this time I'm using the Ventoy project. Some of you have mentioned this on one of my recent videos. Um, it basically lets you put ISO images on a USB thumb drive and then you can run them and install Windows. I grabbed all the chipset drivers from the MSI website and I'm using the December drivers from 2011. Installation went pretty smooth. I also have the Realtek sound drivers from the MSI website and also the Realtek Ethernet drivers. Here we can see GPU set with these specifications. So the video card has 800 shaders running at 850 megahertz. One gigabyte of VRAM uh, GDDR5 with a 128-bit bus running at 1.2 gigahertz. So the processor, yep, downclocked to 2.6 gigahertz. And I also confirmed that the memory runs in dual channel configuration. Always check the user manual to make sure you're inserting the RAMs correctly. Unfortunately, I then ran into some issues. The graphics driver uh, crashed and also I had a freeze in 3D Mark 2001 SE. Now this is nothing new, happens all the time behind the scenes when you're working with old computer parts. So usually what I do is swap out parts to figure out what's going on. First is always the RAM and so I swapped the RAM for two identical modules and yeah look at that now all the benchmarks and tests complete. 
But uh, that's not the end of the story. We'll come back to that issue later in the video. In 3D Mark 2001 SE, 26,651. In 3D Mark 03, we're getting 42,852. And in 3D Mark 05, we're getting 16,957. Let's run some gaming benchmarks. Far Cry's first. This is running with the ultra details and 16x anisotropic filtering. And across all the resolutions, we're getting decent performance. At 1280 by 1024, we're still getting 88.73 FPS, which is fantastic. Here we have Doom 3 with ultra details, 1280 by 1024. So ultra details means uncompressed textures. You need 512 megabytes of VRAM and we're getting 122.5 FPS. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast is another cool benchmark, 1080p. So this is a additional yeah, tech demo or level for the game to showcase HDR and it was released in 2005, one year after Half-Life 2. And it achieves 177.47 FPS. And now let's test a few games. We have Need for Speed Underground. So this game is from 2004. So this is really Windows XP era. And although we have Windows 7 as an operating system, I will test older games and then later we're gonna look at some more modern stuff. So this game, we're running at 1280 by 1024. Everything is turned on. I just turned off the motion blur because I don't like the look of it. And yeah, runs silky smooth with 60 fps locked painkiller black edition 1080p a first person shooter from 2004 haven't really played this game a lot i made it maybe to the second level but i like playing it uh, looks cool and yeah over 100 fps silky smooth evolver is an older game this is from 2000 we're running at 1280 by 960 and it's got an interesting concept um incorporating and altering DNA that you absorb from other creatures, but not quite sure what you have to do in this game. So maybe I need to sit down, read the user manual and play it a little bit more. Return to Castle Wolfenstein at 1024 by 768 with dynamic lights. This is an older game from 2001 and it struggles to max out the FPS. Uh, the engine has a cap at around 90, but it does drop down into the 70s. So this is an OpenGL game and Radeon cards have always had a bit of a weak spot when it comes to OpenGL. So maybe here uh, using more modern drivers could solve the issue, but I didn't have time to investigate. Screamer 4x4. This is quite a, yeah, underrated or rare game. I don't see it featured uh, too much on YouTube from the year 2000, 1280 by 960. So this is something if you're into four wheel driving um, and yeah, has some decent graphics. It's not a racing game. You have to be really careful. Has got uh, physics and you can easily flip your vehicle. We have, yeah, something I noticed, the anisotropic filtering, although I forced it in the driver, doesn't seem to be working in this game at least. Far Cry 2. So now we are testing a few more modern games. This one is from 2008. Ultra details and it struggles at around 60 FPS, but lowering the details to very high, it's still hovering around that 60 FPS mark. So we're, we're just borderline. You might have to play this one at high or medium details to get higher FPS, but it, it does a fairly, fairly decent job. Here we have Tomb Raider Underworld. This game is from 2008. All the settings are maxed out and seems to be running great most of the time. No concerns. Every now and then it's got a few hiccups or small starters, but really nothing bad. And yeah, all in all, seems to be running really well. Hitman Blood Money. This game is from 2006. Also seems to be running well. 1080p, so we get the nice widescreen aspect ratio. And yeah. Sometimes it's close to the 60 FPS with small dips below, but I would say this game does run pretty well. It's not a game where you need ultra high frame rate all of the time. This one is a little bit slow paced and more about exploring the environment and figuring out how to get away uh, by staging accidents. This is Hitman Absolution. 
This one is too much for this computer. It's from 2012 and struggles to even hit 30 FPS most of the time. Beautiful graphics and it's impressive that this machine can run it, but we are not getting good performance. Here we have Dead Space, another game from 2008. Also everything is maxed out. We're running at 1080p and it does run well, but every now and then it will dip below 60 and I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, I do remember back in the day I had a, a GeForce 9500 and I, I remember playing Dead Space and it was okay. And then I got a Radeon card which was in the benchmarks much faster, but in Dead Space I feel this is a title that runs better on NVIDIA cards and you need a more powerful Radeon. But all in all, yeah, it runs okay. Prince of Persia, also from 2008, 1920 by 1080, ultra details seems to be running great. And on this computer, we didn't run into the issue uh, where it freezes during the loading screen and you have to force VSync. So on this machine, it works fine. Race Driver Grid, this is a game from 2008, 1920 by 1080 with ultra details and also seems to be running well. So this is a racing game. I believe it used to be on GOG, but they pulled it very likely some licensing issue. I don't know what's the deal with racing games, but they always seem to be having some copyright or licensing issues. But does it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis running at 1080p, all the details maxed out. So those are the very high presets with the DirectX 10 64-bit render path. But unfortunately, no, this system does not run Crisis. 30 FPS is the most uh, you're gonna get average in this game. I would say, no, it doesn't run Crisis. You really have to play around with lowering the details to make it playable on this machine. So guys, there's a lot to talk about this system. I think for 17 US dollars, uh, it's a bargain. And um, especially for Windows XP, the performance is outstanding and we have full compatibility. You will get XP drivers for all the components officially, don't have to mod any drivers and you will get silky smooth frame rates in pretty much any Windows XP era game. Windows Vista and Windows 7 performance, it does depend on the game. So I think this machine would be most suitable for a hybrid machine that is compatible with Windows XP and Windows Vista with some dual booting. That way you can play all the late Windows XP era games maxed out and also those early Windows Vista games that uh, saw DirectX 10 patches and upgrades for better graphics. The processor, the AMD Athlon 2, is a little bit on the slow side. Firstly, it's clocked at only 2.6 gigahertz. And then the Athlon 2 is maybe around 10%, maybe 20% slower than uh, the AMD Phenom 2. So the Phenom 2 was the faster one. It had more cache also uh, clocked a little bit higher. So if you wanna upgrade this machine, yeah, upgrade the processor, get a Phenom 2 X4. Although for gaming, maybe a Phenom 2 X2 or X3 is all you need, but make sure you have a high clock speed. As for the video card, the Radeon HD 5770 or 6770 is not a bad video card. It was a, it was a mainstream uh, middle of the market video card back in the day and we can see it in some of the more modern titles that it does start to struggle a little bit. And as always, there are lots of other cards you can get. Here we have the Radeon 6870, for example. This one is much faster. And talking about the Radeon 6870, I actually did end up having to test this video card. Now, remember in the beginning we had issues with the computer and I swapped the RAM and then everything looked to be fine. But later I did some investigation. I ran mem test overnight. It didn't pick up any memory errors. And then I ran 3D Mark 2001 SE uh, and I looped it and yeah, the machine would after a while uh, crash. So I swapped out the video card, the 6870 and here no crashes. So I think that our Radeon 6770 might actually be faulty or have some sort of an issue. But even if you buy such a computer and one of the components is a little bit flaky, once you've figured out what it is, you can replace it. Prices for parts from this era 
should not be too hard and you can always look on local Facebook groups, Craigslist and so on um, and try to pick up a, a bargain. Now, this computer was in Melbourne and yeah, unfortunately for me, impossible to pick up. So hopefully you found this video interesting. I tried to uh, recreate that computer as best as I could uh, because I have so many parts. And if you found this video interesting, we might make a series out of it. Um, we can call it something like, um, yeah, nobody wanted this computer or why did nobody want these parts? Something like that. And yeah, I want to hear from you. What is your opinion about this machine? Uh, the price, retro gaming value, parts prices in general, always eager to hear from you. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and share the video with your friends. And I shall see you soon with another one.